Today is the 6th of June 2014 and today we are marking in Europe the D-Day commemorations. It's 70 years to the day, the 6th of June 1944, that the D-Day landings took place. Um, this is one of the most documented events of World War II um, and by extension therefore human history. It was unquestionably a pivotal moment of the 20th century. Obviously a very sombre occasion as war always is. But the Allied victory of that day really did um, held a triumph of liberty over totalitarianism. It, it sounds almost like a cliche because it's been said so many times. But we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that's essentially what it was. When you consider the sort of agenda that the Third Reich had, then it's not an exaggeration to say that. I believe this year's commemoration will be the last big commemoration um, because the veterans all now, the youngest veterans are 88. If you do a bit of maths, if they were 18 in 1944, they're 88 now. So I believe this will be the last big commemoration and uh, next year when uh, we come to the 70th anniversary of the end of the war. I believe that may be the last large scale commemoration of the end of World War II. But that doesn't mean forgetting what happened and forgetting the massive sacrifice that did take place. Um, I really don't want to make this a political video. Um, I want to avoid that as much as possible. But you can't help feeling a sense of tragic irony that just as world leaders meet today in northern France, hosted by President Hollande, um, fighting continues in eastern Ukraine, in Slovyansk. Uh, there was a tense meeting at this D-Day commemoration between Putin and the new Ukrainian president, uh, Poroshenko. I imagine that was a very tense meeting. Um, for the sake of respecting the, the background to this video, I'm not going to commentate on that. Apologies, by the way, for I've got a little bit of a cold. Um, but I, I do think it's still worth mentioning that the, that has happened today. Um, I'm not going to talk about sides. My, my views on the situation in Ukraine are well known by now. But there is some poignancy to that. Um, a lot of world leaders were there. Obama was there. The Queen was there, as in Queen Elizabeth II. Um, I'm not sure if Stephen Harper was there. Uh, Prince William and Princess Catherine were there. President Hollande, of course. Um, it was a very, very poignant event. And this has got quite a lot of coverage on a lot of big networks. Uh, the British press, of course, have been covering it widely. Angela Merkel was also there, which is, of course, significant. If you have any idea about history, that's significant. And it reminds me of the time she joined President Sarkozy of France at uh, the Verdun battlefield on the 90th anniversary of that battle. Um, there can be few images of the 20th century that are as defining as that one. I mean, there's a lot obviously, but it is really one of those moments in history that is so pivotal, so important, and so strategically um, and just uh, it's it's a moment that will be forever embedded in time as a pivotal moment in, in human history. Not actually just of the 20th century, but in human history. Bearing in mind this was the largest Allied invasion ever. So, the poignancy really is strong. Um, there isn't much more to say, really. Um, I think the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, which of course is about this uh, this event, is a very very graphic uh, display. That film got a bit of slack because of the storyline but I don't think anyone could deny that the opening scene of the film was very powerful. Um, so that's it really. There isn't much more to say. Um, I'm not going to make a passive statement and say I hope this makes us all think of the end of war because that simply isn't going to happen. But we should never ever lose sight of the sacrifice those brave brave men made. There was one more light-hearted moment when an old veteran actually parachuted in. Um, he sounded like quite a character, and that's he made some interesting points. He said that he was actually a little bit embarrassed by the adulation, and that's a that's a sort of um, uh, 
common theme about all of this. The soldiers themselves do not necessarily see themselves as gleaming knights in shining armour. They see themselves as normal guys who showed exceptional courage under exceptional circumstances. Bear in mind, I sometimes think that when we commemorate war, we can sometimes adulate soldiers to the point of almost dehumanising them. Bear in mind, these were normal guys. They they enjoyed hobbies like anyone else. Some of them liked football. Some of them probably enjoyed going to the theatre at peacetime. They, they had girlfriends. They had wives. They Some had children. They weren't supermen, but they were exceptionally brave men. And I think on this day we just need to remember the incredible sacrifice those men made. So this is uh, the D-Day commemoration 70 years ago today.